Okay, this episode is going to seem really ridiculous because the whole idea behind doing this Bajo Pinto was to keep it as messed up looking as when I found it. But guitars that have had cracks in them, uh, that have chunks missing out of the finish, deep gouges and that kind of thing, it's cool to have those remnants, if you will, or if you won't, but open wood that's not finished is going to dry out and crack. So what we want out of this thing is cracked headstock. I want to be able to see it was cracked. All the splits on the body, all the deep gouges here, the cuts in the top, the Mars. We are going to touch these up a little bit and then we're going to fill them and then we're actually, believe this or not, going to kind of give this thing a French polish where it looks deep, lustrous, terrible. That's the goal here. So let me take a couple minutes and show you some little tricks that people use on a lot better guitars than this one. Let's hit the bench. I got to get out my artiste beret, beret, barrette, whatever. No, never mind. Skip all that. We'll just, anyway, let's go. Okay, before we get going here, I just kind of wanted to show you a little close up of some of the stuff that we're worried about here. There was actually a hole and a crack right here. Um, the bridge is not glued on yet. We are not going to put a finish of any kind under the bridge there. Um, we want to take the potentiometers out of this thing while the back is still off. Remember in the last episode, if you saw it right up there right about now, we wired this thing up. And we got a little bit of cleanup to do here, but we're going to take these off and we're going to get everything finished that we want finished, but we really don't want to put finish over anything that we're going to apply a glue to, to attach anything. So, um, there's some stuff on the side here. Um, these cracks right here, they're fixed and we're going to scrape them down a little bit. But I really, really don't want to get down to the old wood and past the old finish and start sanding and having it look like anything. We're actually going to build this up with lacquer and get the side that's a little bit low built up rather than sanding everything down. We want to make sure that everything is filled here. There's a couple of right there there's a couple of pretty deep gouges there where somebody spliced in a new piece of wood and then we've got some stuff on the side like right here that i want to attend to there's a lot of watercolor work here and there's a product that i am going to use um that is a lac finish that we're going to use watercolor to touch up some of this stuff and then we can put a, a, bre a, a light coat of lac polish on it. It's going to shine it up nice and then we can do coat after coat after coat. But the important thing is if you get this stuff touched up with watercolors and kind of match some of this stuff then you start using the lacquer. You don't want to try to put lacquer uh, or watercolor, excuse me, water-based stuff over the top of lacquer. That doesn't work out. Another thing you want to think about is if you use any kind of a glue or anything like that, the uh, finish is not going to stick to it. So you want to be cognizant of that. I want to point out here that you can see that there's some red and green in this 
I guess that we could call this purfling. I don't know what we want to call it. It was pieced together. And you want to remember that this was handmade. You can tell that the curfing on the bottom is just glued in individual pieces of wood that we kind of worked around. While we're in here, if you haven't seen the episodes, there's a lot, a lot of crack and bracing and curfing replacement uh, going on here. But anyway, we're going to make this thing look as terrible as we can with the best finish that we could possibly put on it. So let's get some stuff out and I'll show you a couple tricks. But if you got some places on here that are grimy and you want to clean up, you just put a little naphtha on here and then you just go to town and that rosette's gonna kind of pop too, but you're gonna take some of the grime off of here and then all this stuff will, will spear it off. You can see where that, where the marks were from picking at everything. Where people were strumming. But then there's this stuff called Everclear. And believe you me, it works pretty good at taking stuff off as well. You're starting to see the colors come out now. And then, I've got some magical stuff. I can't tell you what it is, but you can see it's separating you got to keep moving the stuff around because there's stuff in it doesn't like oil and water and that kind of stuff doesn't mix but this you can hear as we go along here this wood will start squeaking which means that it's clean Again, listen to that, yeah. You're gonna hear a lot of that later once we start polishing this thing off. But don't get anything where you are gonna glue stuff down and make sure that the glue doesn't get anywhere where you're gonna put finish. Okay, let's look at the next step, which is touch up. Um, this is pretty fancy stuff I'm gonna show you here quick. I've got some great, great brushes. Some of them are very tiny. Sometimes I wanna put the dark specks of mahogany looking something or other. Um, I also sometimes have to drop lacquer. We're gonna see some of that. There's different kinds of lacquer, some of it is is um, clear and some of it is darker and I will tell you what if you leave your lacquer container open it will thicken up with air and also the amount of air that's in the lacquer uh, bottle is going to determine how quickly things darken up so little trick if you take some marbles like these and when you've got your lacquer the color you want it to be or if it's just clear you put marbles in there and the hydrostatic pressure meaning the amount of displacement that occurs because of the physical size of the marble being dropped into the bottle will limit the amount of air and thus give you the ability to stop your lacquer from getting thicker. So 
um, the brushes I use for that are a little bit different than the ones I'm going to use for the watercolor I'm about to show you now. This is the watercolor tubes. These are the watercolor tubes. I use Windsor and Newton only watercolors, not oil base. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit when I start dropping lacquer onto what we have touched up. So I've got different things in here. I've got marker pens. I've got extra of the colors I need. I have different colors of lacquer and a way to clean all this up. So I can just take this. Everything stays where it is. I've even got these little containers if you've ever if you ever run across these these are handy you can put whatever you want in there and keep it tight from spilling all over the place and that is this so when you see this around the work gets a little serious now what I'm gonna do is take a couple of these brushes here you notice there's nothing real big as far as these brushes you see that so let's set this off to the side. Okay, on the guitar we're using, I've got two colors I'm gonna use. And so I'm just gonna take a dab of this and put it over here. There's some there already. You don't need a ton. Um, I've got this darker color, which is over here. If, guys, if I'm not gonna, if I'm not telling you something, it's like I've got people asking me questions about what is this in the bottle. There's three ingredients. I told you one of them's oil, one of them's water. That's why it separates and there's a third ingredient. The reason I'm not telling you the third ingredient is because if you do something and mess up your guitar, it's gonna be, oh, I listen to you. No, you listen to yourself, figure it out. Anyway, there's a little bit of yellow in this finish on this guitar. I really don't need any darker colors than what's here. So, by the way, this uh, paint holder, whatever you want to call it, is ceramic. It's old, but it washes out good. And the nice thing about it is the paint will dry out, but it's watercolor. So all I have to do is once I get my right combination, and you can see there's different mixes going on here of things. And then I've got one that holds water. The same thing, I'm gonna keep this, these colors uh, of the water wash out are a little bit different each. So I'm gonna put this stuff off to the side. I'm gonna put my paints away. Don't step on these. And besides that, these are fairly expensive per tube. But once you get the colors you need, know where they're at and protect them. Do not let, leave this stuff in a cold shed and then let it get hot and all that kind of thing. So let's take a look at the guitar now. How are we on the angle I'm gonna need? I'm gonna try to have this where you can see what I'm up to while I'm doing it, okay? We're gonna work on this area right here. There's a couple of scrapes. And um, the first thing I want you to know is you need to be able to see where there's light. If you don't have light, supplement it with either one of those things that fits on your head or one of these, where you can look at the light. Because if you don't have light, this is gonna be messed up. The trick to this is, there's a finish on this varnish or whatever they used here and there and it's of different layers and stuff so if your repair that you're making the masking that you're making is a markedly different color then what happens is as soon as you put on your lac polish it's going to stick out like a sore thumb so can you see here there's a couple of marks 
that look like scrapes and cuts. So I'm going to have my paper towel around and I'm going to be ready to daub the brush in that if I need to. Let's get a piece of that where I can where you can see it. Okay. I am dropping everything literally. Okay, I have the two colors here that are going to represent just about anything I need to have happen here. There's a little bit of dark like streaks in this wood, kind of like mahogany. It's not, but it kind of appears that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my water here and then I'm going to take some of this brownish color. I'm going to get it going over here like so and then I'm just going to take just a tad of the darker right here and I'm going to put it up here okay you see that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a number of different colors going here lightest to darkest you see that and if I think my brush is getting bad I'm going to but I want a good combination here because wood never looks like one solid color. So I'm going to put this off to here. We don't want to spill it. Okay. And do you see right here, there's a couple scrapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this light color in there until the dark color starts to disappear. You see that? couple here couple there if I can see that dark color I'm gonna go back to the palette or the paint holder and I'm gonna get some more because I really want to make those lines disappear then I'm gonna take my little finger I'm gonna put a little spit on it not too much and then I'm just gonna go like that with the grain. You see that? So what I'm going to try to do is make these dark lines disappear. Like so. Bigger ones are up here. We're going to blend it like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to you see these little marks here. I'm going to go into where it's a little bit darker right here. Not too much. But along that line, now I'm just going to do a little bit of that like that. And what that is going to do what I'm actually doing is drying this out a little bit. What that is going to do, me running those along with the grain line, is going to help those lines to disappear some and make the wood look natural. Again, I'm going to come at it both ways. That looks a little light right up there. You want to remember, when you get the right color going on here, you can just leave this on here, wait for that airplane to fly over. Because all you got to do is moisten up your brush and you can rehydrate these colors like so. See that? Now, if, if these ruts are deep, you can get a little bit more water in there because you want anything that's deep in there to kind of disappear that's going to help you with your color 
Okay. Now there's some red and green coloring here on this kind of faux purfling. And I want that not to be messed up. You see that? How's that looking from up there? It looks like those lines, they're still in there and they're pretty deep, but you can't see what's going on. Now, there's a spot right here where I think somebody was strumming a lot. So I'm gonna wanna create some grain in there. It looks like grain. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. See that line right there? I don't want that messed up. So I'm just gonna do this and look at it with my light. And then to make it a little bit darker there to go with the grain, I'm gonna take this smaller brush here wet it just a little bit and then I'm going to get into a little bit of darker stuff and then I'm just going to spot it here and there like so and just put a couple streaks in there did you see that then I just do this. That's looking pretty good. Now they've got this brush come in over here and there and do the same thing where I made these like so. There we go. There's little, a couple of stray hairs there. There's little nicks right there. We can do that. That actually looks okay. Now I've done some work over on this side. Over here, can we see that? Not really. But that's dried off a little bit, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to put a couple of streaks that make it look like it gives it that grain. Like so. And that's really the extent of it. Okay, we had this area right here that actually there was a hole in the guitar. And we patched it up and covered it up. Uh, as you've seen us doing in the... And when we put the 16th inch mahogany veneer in there. But again, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take, go around here. Because we just need to lighten that up a little bit like so. See that? And then there's a spot where we had some tape. I want to cover that up. And we came around in here and did some sanding. And it's just messing around. You can tell I've got literally every color that you could possibly want. So if I'm looking at this and saying, okay, that, that appears to be a little bit dark, then I can just take between the dark and the light because I blended this and just come in and do a little bit of that. See, or make my own color there. And you're going to take a break between this and see how it works out. And again, run your light because without that light, there may be some things you don't see. Like maybe there needs to be a happy little tree right in this area right there okay next step I've got clear lacquer remember there's marbles in it to keep the lacquer clear because if you let it sit open or the more air that's in 
the bottle, the lacquer will turn darker. Sometimes you want that. I don't want that today. And then I've got some cleaner that I can use on my brush. But now what I'm going to do is spill the cleaner all over and ruin this wonderful finish. No, I'm not going to do that. So this is better put over here. But I've got a number of brushes here. They're good brushes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spot the spots where there's nicks and chunks out of this. And I'm going to take this. And you see it's pretty thick. It doesn't want to drop off there. But I'm going to go to each one of these and I'm just going to touch it. You see that? Anywhere where I want. I'm not going to paint it in there. I'm just going to let it drop in there and it will run into and so what will happen is when I go to finish this by putting lac polish over the top I will have filled in all of these places that are low and then we'll scrape them with a razor blade See, it's all jumping in there. Where this comes in handy is if you've got, uh, let's say, a crack and it's offset. So let's say this is a crack. And the way it comes together, this one is up just a little bit over that one. You see that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sandpaper and sand this one down to no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with lacquer like I'm doing right here until they build up. And that way I don't take wood away. Never take original wood away. Build up to it, but do not take it away. Now, some of these deeper ones may require you to wait a little bit between different applications but I'm going to go here everywhere where I think I've had to fill something or there's a crack or a split and this will actually help hide those repairs that we did okay you see that now let me make sure the camera is in the right spot or the guitar because right here can we see that yeah there is a gap somebody made some kind of binding or something out of here and there's a few spots where that stuff there's a separation so I'm gonna take lacquer and I'm gonna start up here where that starts and I'm just gonna let it drop in there like so You have to be patient with this. Okay, you remember I told you that there was a hole right here. So I'm just going to start dropping this in here. And it's going to take a number of fills here. And you're going to see when we go to scraping this down that the low spot that needs to be filled will not turn dull when we start scraping with a razor blade and everything not too much you want to be patient anyway we're starting to look pretty good here I'm really looking at these little splits are going on this runs really good if things are going right okay you see that Got a couple more up here. I want to remember, this might look like it's sticking out like a sore thumb right now, but it's all going to have lac polish over the top. And so it will look uniform at the end. 
Okay, let's let that sit until it's ready to scrape and do the next coat. Okay, let's move off to the side. Remember those big cracks we did? And we got them pretty close because we used pieces of cork paper and pieces of wood to try and level this out so we didn't have to sand it flat. There's a couple of spots here where that those cracks are not exactly even and putting lacquer on it clear lacquer is going to fill whatever's left in the air gap of those cracks you see it just runs in there it's running down right there so you'll you'll get to learn where the stuff is working for you and then we've got some lighter cracks right there. See, I, I think you can see it running there. You just got to place it right. Because this filling, this side of the crack is minutely low over here. And you can see it's filling in there. Yeah, it's all running here. It's not up there. So that's, that's the high side. Let's see what happens when we start filling over here. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty level there. A little bit low. Okay, so while we are there letting that lacquer try and set up, you can see there's a pretty good scratch right here. So we're gonna get back into our watercolors and because they are watercolors and because we just rehydrate the brush we're just going to come into here like so and use the little darker stuff we had because the sides are a tad darker and now we're gonna make that look like one of these other scratches instead of the big gouge that it really is same way on the neck. Let me make sure that we can see this. Right there. We just kind of take a look at which color seems to match better get down in there like so it needs a little bit of darker color like so now there is right here a block of wood that was chunked in there we just want to leave that one alone i think and then once this is dry because we don't want gouges out of our neck we are going to take and drop fill that and get it pretty level anyway i could go on for hours like this and i will which makes this guitar even more costly than i could ever make money off of bit. once these cracks have been lacquered up and dried there's a couple tools you need they're razor blades one has tape on it up to the edge right there the other one has tape on both edges and with only the middle open and what that allows you to do is ride the edge of a crack the tape protects the finish and it scrapes off what was fixed on the crack the trick here is to read that once you get the scrape down you don't want to start getting into the tape because then you'll get into the finish but once this gets scraped down you'll see that the high spot still uh, will, will be dull, but the low side of it will still be shiny, meaning you need more fill until they're both. You see that? 
see there's still a low spot right here, which means I still have fill work to do there. Again, as long as you keep that tape solid, you'll not get to the original finish, and that's really important. You do the same thing on the stuff you've done on the top. We have filled that. There's a little bump there. So I just go along like so. And I can see right there, there's shiny spots down in those holes up in this area up here where those deep cracks were. I'm gonna go with the grain and see that's coming off. And there is one little spot right there that I can see some shiny, shiny stuff, but that's it. Over and over until everything is smooth and then we're gonna put some lac pad finish over it and it will look wonderful. All right, I've spared you a lot of lac filling and, and scraping and razor blading and all of that. Now, we are going to use some lac pad polish and we are just going to go over this. And remember, this stuff is spirits, so it will try to stick to each other. When you leave the guitar, yeah, see, that's already sticky. So when you put this on, you are going to move constantly. And when you go off the guitar, do not dab on in the middle or anything like that. You're just going to come on the guitar like this and keep moving. Then you're going to give it a few minutes in between and then we're just going to build it up, build it up. And I'll show you how to do that with a lac pad here in a minute. You can tell the stuff will start to dry. It won't feel sticky anymore and then you can just keep building and building. Okay guys, next step. Tedious. This is a lac pad. This is fine linen. Inside of that is a piece of wool. A wool sock will do great. And inside of that is cotton. You tie it up like this. You soak it in lac pad polish. And you get it flat like this and compacted. Now, you can put lac pad finish inside of an old Vicks bottle and just leave it in here and it will be soaked up. Then what you do is it's going to take a lot of coats, but you basically take this, flatten it out, and you come on to the guitar. You don't just drop on because you'll have spots all over it. Not that this doesn't have spots, but you're going to get a mirror-like thick finish. It will protect the wood despite all of its abnormalities and whatever it has but you come on in one spot like that and you go in tight concentric circles and you will feel the pad trying to grasp on to the finish that you're putting down and you just keep moving on. 
do not pick up or set down in the middle of the guitar. Like I said, when you feel the pad tugging against itself, you just move on and then off the guitar. I just did this, so I'm gonna come on there. I'm gonna turn it in here, I'm gonna keep this moving. Do not stop, just keep going around and around. Now, if you feel a pad drying out, recharge it by doing this. And again, just drop on at an angle and sweep off like so. Come on here. And you're gonna do this so many times. And little by little, you're gonna realize, oh, this is getting very lustrous. Again, come on here. Come off there. You will be able to do this five or six times a day. Let it vapor off. And now I'm going to tell you this. I am going to get this all done. And I still haven't glued this bridge down. I don't want to glue on to lack polish and everything. So once I'm ready to let this dry out, you see there's some in there. I just put this down in there and I cover it up and that lac pad will charge itself by being in here. Okay guys, I am really, really happy with what my lac pad did for this guitar. You remember what it looked like when we started and if you look at the top of it in the light, it is very shiny. It looks very, very old like one of those mid 1800s guitars that kind of had this kind of um, bridge on them some ornate thing and also remember how cracked up the sides were that finish came out nice too as did the neck and you know what's sad about this is I'm going to take these and a piece of metal from a drilling rig site and I am going to put it back on this thing that's beautiful. I just, you know, I just have to ruin it. Let's hit the closing commentary. Okay guys, what a long, arduous process. I bet that when we started, you never thought that I would be doing something that you would see on a fine a violin, a cello, or a, a good classical guitar, and that is the French polish. Let me tell you this. If you are going to save the finish on a guitar, no matter what condition it's in, even if you're trying to fix a little spot or the thing is just old and trashed and the the marks on it and everything that the battle scars whatever you want to call them if you want to protect those and keep the wood safe from drying out French polish is the way to go I'm happy with the way this turned out you can see it in the light and the best thing about this is I can continue to do this no, not knock stuff off while I'm haphazardly fumbling for all of these props that I have up here to lengthen, lengthen the episode while you go to sleep listening to my voice. Isn't it hypnotizing? And have you quit smoking yet? Yes, you're welcome. So anyway, I hope you didn't get your hopes up because we're going from this to... <laughs> this in the next time episode we are going to jump pile this thing up now in the way that you know i ultimately have to disappoint everybody except that one that one person that looks at this guitar and goes i have to have that get your money ready Padna. we're getting close now
See you soon.